Hi everyone, this is Satish Kale and I'm a principal solution architect at Red Hat and I focus on middleware, cloud and container technologies. This is a short preso about uh, using agile integration for something seemingly as common as uh, doing service management by using various interfaces. But before that, uh, what is modernization? What does it mean for you? So for some modernization, it may mean doing things faster, doing things in more reliable manner or whatever it is. However, mostly the businesses, when they think about modernization, they basically think about overcoming the challenges that they face in a much quicker and innovative manner. Like you must have always heard about it, doing more with less. Uh, but primarily it basically means that, okay, speed is equal to revenue. So uh, an ability to do things faster will uh, generate more revenue for you. That's the idea. So <clears throat> how do you do that? Okay, I mean, improving time to value. Yes, that's the idea over here. And for that, okay, they need to do a uh, fast development processes. They need to use uh, and adopt future ready architecture. They really need to optimize development and uh, packaging styles, and then eventually uh, do a cloud adoption to save cost and okay, achieve flexibility and agility. So this will result in lower time to value. We are talking about doing these in days and weeks instead of months and years as we move towards microservices based applications that are hosted on containers, which are running on cloud, or hybrid cloud and that which are using DevOps processes. Now, let us take an example of a person, okay? I mean, basically for any person, this all modernization and all those things is maybe a distant concept. This is more an IT technology stuff. For a regular user, what does it mean? It means they will be able to use the choice of tools in their modernization journey. So can they use these tools for doing uh, okay, uh, something uh, very common things that they would like to do, like uh, and they they do that. Okay, like uh, ordering a cab, book your travel and accommodation, or pay your utility bills. Now let us take an example of a person. Let's call him Adam. Okay, who will like to have an easy way to deal with some of the services he has subscribed for. So he has subscribed for mobile, internet, cable service from a provider. Let us see if we can experience the benefits of this modernization we keep hearing about. Say Adam may say hey and ask Alexa, tell me the pending balance on my mobile bill and Alexa will reply back with information on the pending balance. Adam may ask Alexa, pay my mobile bill now and Alexa replies back with a confirmation of payment. Similarly, you may want to use some different channels, different mechanisms to do this, the things like paying your internet connection bill or okay, uh, subscribing or unsubscribing from certain cable TV okay, packages. So these are the some of the uh, okay service actions like you want to view a bill for e any of these services, pay them, have a service details, service activation, service deactivation, so and so forth. Okay. But do you think it's Alexa who actually does that, or any of the okay Slack or any of these things do that? These are mere integrations, uh, sorry interfaces, and we are talking about an integration scenario here. So it's a classical integration scenario. These interfaces merely capture user input and then they are supposed to pass on to the backend systems. Example of these interfaces are not just visual or audio entities like Amazon Echo or Google Home or mobile phone, but also something like mail, messaging system, collaboration tools like Slack and so on. So before we do that, okay, I mean, let's try to understand from a developer point of view, what does this mean for them? Okay, this centralized integration piece, which magically sits in there, achieves the integration or interfacing with these uh, very heterogeneous interfaces, but under the hoods, what does it do? So to, to understand that, we need to see from a developer's point of view and their approach is simplified. First, there's a complex integration requirement. He understands that, he or she. And then the first task will be to break it into a smaller task. For each task, you need to choose the right tools, technology, process, and interface. Let's show okay the developer okay how developer may want to do that. So if you look at this, this is a JBoss Developer Studio. It uses uh, JBoss Fuse, which is based upon Apache Camel, which will provide you many easy mechanisms to author this complex flow. So if you look on the top, I've defined a, a particular REST endpoint, and within that there are these components which are called choice and when. So basically, when we are passing some content to an integration layer. 
your content may also have information through which you may want to do content based routing so take an example over here that content you might have passed contains information like what exactly service are they want to act upon mobile so if you look here when request to customer okay customer is requesting a service mobile it will come in over here within that within a mobile they may want to do either a view the bill or pay the bill or similarly if you are okay choosing another service which is an internet you may like to do the similar things like you may want to uh, check the status of internet or you may want to do the termination of internet and there's also a third service for cable and so and so forth you can keep adding on that now under this source okay you may choose what task or activities you'd like to do like in this particular example we have when okay the cable uh, sorry the uh, phone's view bill is done okay you may want to send an email back to the customer saying about what are those what that bill was and okay send that as an attachment and so on. so that service may be invoked and you can define this over here or you may want to do okay any termination of service or something like that or activation of roaming or anything you may want to have a messaging system over here okay invoking a messaging system or you may want to okay for a request of having okay uh, checking a status of an internet you may want to reply back on a slack channel to the customer so you get an idea i mean these are the endpoints that you can define and as a process within this integration flow you can drag and drop these components if you look on the right hand side these drag you can drag and drop these components and pull them over here i mean uh, and this will give you an ability to okay do this development super quick and why why is it quick because these are all ready made components you're not coding for these complex integration endpoint definitions and connecting to two complex systems there are hundreds of these endpoints available for you to work with there are many uh, components say example for routing for a control flow transformation and many others i'll be going through some of these list of what those technologies and those uh, choices are but basically this is the idea this is your, your developer uh, studio through which you will be able to define this okay so how does it define okay this is one example wherein it eventually presents it into an, uh, an xml file but in other cases you may have okay a choice of using something like java dsl or spring xml and so many ways you can do this okay. now once you have defined this i mean how would you how would you connect with say alexa okay i mean how do you achieve connect communication or entry endpoint with alexa let me move to the uh, screen over here and show you the alexa skills okay as a concept of alexa i'm just taking an example of alexa you could use google home assistant or uh, okay those kind of things google assistant now in this particular case with alexa you have to develop uh, something what we uh, is called a skills and within skills you have to define intents so suppose within uh, managed service intent we want to define pay internet bill pay cable bill pay this pay cable bill all of these i can define i can define their interfaces i can define the endpoint and within endpoint i can define whatever okay my custom endpoint over here okay which will be https colon localhost and whatever I, I want to define i can test it further so once i do that what it basically will be doing is it will be converting it into a json and this json will be passed on or it could be an xml or you could have a json you convert into xml and pass it on over here and that would be processed within this integration layer so integration layer acts as a mirror i mean awaits for uh, the interface in this case Alexa to send across that particular package to it or that particular information to it message to it and then it processes and does the complex task of invoking another various endpoints or com okay, complex integrations so one of the example I gave was also about the uh, the slack and okay within a slack there's a concept of webhooks so within uh, if you look over here you will have the ability to define a webhook or okay and you can copy this and add it into the uh, your definition over here and within this you can have that particular okay defined over here and as well as a webhook defined on the top okay as a bean over here so if, so this is how it's fairly simple for a developer very quickly to set this up integration flow this integration flow is primarily called as a uh, as a, ca a camel route because it is based upon open source technology called apache camel 
Let me go back to the presentation. So when we talk about Apache Camel, it comes with, as I showed you earlier on the, on the developer studio, it comes with 262 endpoints as of now with version 7.1. It comes with 40 support for 45 data formats and 21 languages. And I'll be navigating through some of these uh, things, uh, some of the uh, endpoints, data formats and languages that they support, that Apache Camel supports. And again, this is an ever growing list. You keep on uh, seeing this and more and more things will be added to it as new technologies will come in. All of these will be added over here. This, as I said, I repeat, this greatly simplifies your mechanism to okay, do the faster development. Now, as an organization makes strides towards cloud adoption, okay, cloud native to application platform will simplify this digital transformation. So apart from technical benefits, there are immense business benefits associated with that. Okay, like business benefits, as I as mentioned here, like hiring, okay, standardization in how you, what kind of hiring you do, what kind of training you provide, what kind of operations uh, and development procedures and policies you uh, create. All of these will be able to uh, help uh, your development teams to develop things in a flexible manner, in a faster manner, so as to comply with any mission critical, lightweight, or any emerging technologies, okay, uh, based development you need to do. Now, what do we, what does Red Hat provide you for that? So Red Hat provides you with the development platform required to build applications on the cloud, okay? So these include, uh, okay, various uh, stacks, okay, as we call it. And we have a uh, Red Hat application services, okay, which are uh, optimized for OpenShift. OpenShift is our container platform based upon Kubernetes. Uh, and <clears throat> what we provide are runtimes, integration, and automation. These are three buckets. So under runtimes, we provide support for technologies like uh, any uh, microservices development runtimes, uh, in-memory caching for okay using data grid, uh, some messaging, and okay, support for Java. For integration, we have full-fledged uh, messaging. We have mediation layer as JBoss Fuse, which we just now saw. And then we have a API management solution. And for process automation, we have a BPM-based solution and we have a rules engine. Now focusing on these thing, these three buckets, okay, so the integration and okay, connectivity with the, okay, having providing tools, plugins for developers, having CI CD tools, security and services, and optimizing all of these things to be running on OpenShift container platform is the key. And this is where the focus have been. Today, whatever we saw earlier was part of our uh, the integration stack. And within integration stack, we have JWAS views, as I said, which we primarily focused upon. Apart from that messaging technology, EMQ, which is based upon ActiveMQ, it soon has gonna be a support for Kafka and uh, uh, support for AMQP, apart from uh, interconnect router. And then we have API management solution based upon three scale API management. Now, after we have done, okay, all of these, we are able to okay, do the integration. There should be a support for both style of integration. So all, as we slowly moving towards more monolithic, single ESB centric integration to more distributed integration, uh, still the support and deployment style for okay supporting both these okay uh, scenarios should be there microservices development is really uh, revolutionizing how uh, faster the applications can be developed and how the migrations from existing esp vendors is happening because using technologies like apache camel which is part of jboss fuse you will be able to divide those integration tasks into smaller subtasks and develop them into individual microservices and that technology is very suitable for microservices adoption. So finally, okay, when I spoke about JBoss Fuse for agile integration, as I said, it supports all styles of your implementations that you would like to do, whether it's a standalone, you want to do old style, classic integration, or you want to do it on containers in a cloud native manner, okay, using Fuse on OpenShift, or you want to run it as an IPaaS, as a hosted integration, uh, platform as a service with uh, zero code or low code development. All of these are possible. The bits under the same, the primary innovation under the same coming from open source using Apache Camel is the same, but you get it to utilize it in various flavors. I hope this uh, uh, 
this presentation and demo was useful for you. Uh, thank you for hearing me and have a great day.